Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. In this video, we'll be learning about the elbow joint. To begin with, the elbow joint is a hinge variety of synovial joint between the lower end of the humerus that you see right here and the upper ends of the radius and the ulna bone. This is the lower end of the humerus and this is the upper end of the radius and the ulna bone. Now looking at the articular surfaces, the upper end is formed by the capitulum and the trochlea of the humerus. This is the capitulum and this is the trochlea of the humerus. The coronoid fossa lies just above the trochlea right here and the coronoid process of the ulna that you see right here fits into it in extreme flexion as you see right here. This is flexion, this is extension movement. And the radial fossa that you see just above the capitulum right here allows for the radial head fitting during flexion like this. The lower articular surfaces right here include the upper surface of the head of the radius that articulates with the capitulum and the trochlear notch of the ulna that articulates with the trochlea of the humerus. The upper surface of the head of the radius articulates with the capitulum of the humerus. The trochlear notch of the ulna articulates with the trochlea of the humerus. The humeroradial, the humeroulnar and the superior radioulnar joints are together known as cubital articulations. Now concising the important points, the elbow joint is a hinge variety of synovial joint between the lower end of the humerus and the upper ends of the radius and ulna bones. The articular surfaces, the upper articular surface includes the capitulum and trochlea of the humerus. The coronoid fossa lies just above the trochlea and the coronoid process of the ulna fits into it in extreme flexion. Radial fossa is just above the capitulum that allows for radial head fitting in the radial fossa in extreme flexion. Now looking at the lower articular surface, it includes the upper surface of the head of the radius that articulates with the capitulum and the trochlear notch of the ulna articulates with the trochlea of the humerus. The humeroradial, humeroulnar and the superior radioulnar joints are together known as cubital articulations. Moving on to the ligaments of the elbow joint, first let's look at the capsular ligament or the joint capsule that you see right here in the lateral view of the elbow joint. Here is the joint capsule. Superiorly, the joint capsule is attached to the lower end of the humerus in such a way that the capitulum, the trochlea, the radial fossa, the coronoid fossa and the olecranon fossa are intracapsular that is within the capsule. Inframedially, it is attached to the margin of the trochlear notch of the ulna except laterally. Infrolaterally, the joint capsule or the capsular ligament is attached to the annular ligament of the superior radioulna joint that can be found between the radius and the ulna. Next we have the ulna collateral ligament that you see right here. It is triangular in shape. Its apex is attached to the medial epicondyle of the humerus and its base it is attached to the ulna. It is attached below to the coronoid process and the olecranon process. The ligament has thick anterior and posterior bands. This is the posterior band, this is the transverse part and this is the anterior band. Moving on to the third ligament, we have the radial collateral ligament right here. It is a fan shaped band extending from the lateral epicondyle of the humerus to the annular ligament that you see right here. It gives origin to the supinator muscle and the extensor carpi radialis brevis. Now, concising the important points under the ligaments of the elbow joint, first we have the capsular ligament. Superiorly, it is attached to the lower end of the humerus in such a way that the capitulum, trochlea, radial fossa, coronoid fossa and olecranon fossa are intracapsular. Inframedially, it is attached to the margin of the trochlear notch of the ulna except laterally. Infrolaterally, it is attached to the annular ligament of the superior radioulnar joint and the anterior ligament and posterior ligament are thickenings of the capsule. Second, we have the ulna collateral ligament. It is triangular in shape. Its apex is attached to the medial epicondyle of the humerus and its base to the ulna. 
The ligament has thick anterior and posterior bands. It is attached below to the coronoid process and the olecranon process. Now the third that is the radial collateral or the lateral ligament. It is a fan shaped band extending from the lateral epicondyle of the humerus to the annular ligament. It gives origin to the supinator muscle and extensor carpi radialis brevis. Moving on to the relations of the elbow joint. This is a lateral view of the elbow joint. We will see the anterior relations. Anteriorly, the elbow joint is related to the brachialis muscle as you see right here. The tendon of the biceps muscle right here. The median nerve and the brachial artery. Now posteriorly, the elbow joint is related to the triceps brachii right here and the anconius muscle which is not seen in this diagram. This is a frontal view of the elbow joint and medially it is related to the ulnar nerve, the flexor carpi ulnaris and the common flexor muscles that you see right here. Laterally it is related to the supinator muscle right here, the extensor carpi radialis brevis that you see right here and other common extensors. The flexors originate from this side and the extensors originate from this side. Moving on to the blood supply of the elbow joint, it is supplied from the anastomosis around the elbow joint as you can see right here. Now looking at the nerve supply of the elbow joint, the joint receives branches from the ulna nerve right here, the median nerve, the radial nerve, this is the superficial branch of the radial nerve, this is the radial nerve right here and the musculocutaneous nerve, these four nerves. Moving on to the movements of the elbow joint, there are two movements, one is flexion, other is extension. The flexion movement is brought about by the brachialis muscle, the biceps and the brachioradialis. So this is a posterior view of the right upper limb, the extension movement is produced by the triceps muscle and the anconius. Now concising the important points, the relations of the elbow joint, anteriorly it is related to the brachialis, median nerve, the brachial artery and the tendon of the biceps, posteriorly it is related to the triceps brachii and anconius, medially it is related to the ulna nerve, flexor carpi ulnaris and the common flexors, laterally it is related to the supinator muscle, extensor carpi radialis brevis and the comma, common extensors. The blood supply is from the anastomosis around the elbow joint. The nerve supply, the joint receives branches from the following nerves that is the ulna nerve, the median nerve, the radial nerve and the musculocutaneous nerve. Moving on to the movements, there is flexion and extension. Flexion is brought about by brachialis, biceps brachii and brachioradialis. Extension is brought about by triceps and the anconius. Next let us move on to the carrying angle. As you can see this is the humerus bone. This is the trochlea. Now this is the medial aspect of the trochlea and this is the lateral aspect of the trochlea. Now the medial aspect of the trochlea extends more distally than the lateral aspect which shifts the medial aspect of the ulna trochlea notch that you see right here. It shifts the medial aspect of the ulna trochlea notch more laterally okay and this results in a lateral angulation which is called the carrying angle. Now as you can see in this picture, the carrying angle is 10 to 15 degree in males and more than 15 degree in females. Now concising the important points, the transverse axis of the elbow joint is directed medially and downwards. Because of this, the extended forearm is not in straight line with the arm but makes an angle of 13 degree with it. This is known as carrying angle. The factors responsible for the formation of the carrying angle are that the medial flange of the trochlea is 6 mm deeper than the lateral flange. As I told you earlier, this is the medial flange and this is the lateral flange of the trochlea. The superior articular surface of the coronoid process of the ulna is placed oblique to the long axis of the bone. The carrying angle disappears in full flexion of the elbow and during pronation of the forearm. The angle is 10 to 15 degree in males and more than 15 degree in females. Moving to the clinical anatomy of the elbow joint, the distension of the elbow joint by an effusion occurs posteriorly because here the capsule is weak. Tennis elbow is a common condition that occurs in tennis players. Abrupt pronation with fully extended elbow may lead to pain and tenderness over lateral epicondyle. 
Next we have the student's or minor's elbow which is characterized by effusion into the bursa over the subcutaneous posterior surface of the olecranon process. Golfer's elbow is the microtrauma of the medial epicondyle of the humerus which occurs commonly in golf players. The common flexor origin undergoes repetitive strain and results in a painful condition on the medial side of the elbow. This is the medial epicondyle of the humerus which has the common flexor origin as you can see in, marked in red color. It undergoes repetitive strain and results in a painful condition on the medial side of the elbow joint. Finally, the subluxation of the head of the radius that is the pulled elbow occurs in children when the forearm is suddenly pulled in pronation. The head of the radius slips out from the annular ligament. I hope you found this video helpful. To get the notes on elbow joint as well as notes on other subjects of pathology, psychology, physiology and biomechanics, visit my Instagram page. The link to which is given in the description below. To get updates on my latest videos, click on the subscribe button. To get notifications, tap on the bell icon. Thank you for watching.